Staying up to date with everything that's changing in React is incredibly difficult. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the seven main things that you need to understand about React version 19. I'm gonna make it as simple and quick as possible so you can get up to speed with everything you need to know before it even releases. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. As you can see, there's a lot of documentation that React has released about what's going to be happening in version 19. I'm gonna go through in order of importance everything that's changing. And the biggest change is going to be that they're actually adding a compiler to React. This is actually a really big deal because for the longest time, React only ran in the browser and there's no compile step at all. And now other frameworks have come along such as Astro and Svelte and they added in their own compile step. And this compile step just takes care of a lot of things for you behind the scenes so you don't have to write extra code for that. But since React never had that, we had different hooks like use memo, use callback, and the memo function that allowed you to do extra performance things to make sure your code ran performantly since there was no compiler to do that for you automatically. Well, with React version 19, the big thing that they're pushing is this React compiler. So that means that automatically React is going to add its own memoization for things like use memo, use callback, and the memo function. So you never have to use those hooks or functions ever again. It's just going to be automatically taken care of for you by the compiler. So anytime you would normally need to use memo or use callback, you can just completely remove that and the compiler will take care of it for you. Now this is a huge win because not only does it make your code simpler and easier to read and write since you no longer have to think about this, but it also will make your code faster because it's almost always the case that the actual compiler is going to find more instances of where you should be doing memoization than where you would normally find it yourself. So having this extra compile step is going to make your application faster and easier to write and is honestly the thing I'm most excited about for React version 19 because these hooks are the reason that React is so confusing and complicated to write, especially as you get more larger and larger applications where performance is really important. Now the next two main features I wanna talk about are something that you may be familiar with if you've already worked inside of Next.js, and that's the idea of actions as well as the use client and the use server directive. We'll start by talking about actions since this affects you a little bit more directly, but if you've ever worked inside of Next.js, you know that you can create a form and instead of passing an on submit, you pass it an action, and this action will take in all of your different form data and you can do whatever you want with this action. And if you're using Next.js, this action can even run on the server instead of running in the client. Well, the big change with React 19 is first that they're making that this is a stable feature because right now it's not really a stable feature. And secondly, they're adding it so it actually works inside of client or server applications. So this action that I pass in here, which is just a function that takes in my form data, can either run on the client or it can run on the server. And it has other hooks built around it that make dealing with state and loading and so on incredibly easy. As you can see here, we have hooks called use form status and use form state. And if you wanna learn more about these new hooks, I actually have an entirely free course on every single React hook you need to know. And I constantly update this course with ever new hooks are released. So if that sounds interesting, check out the link down in the description below and sign up for that course. And again, I'll update it as soon as new hooks are released or changed. But essentially this new way of using an action instead of an on submit just gives you a more built-in way in React to actually deal with forms, form submissions, form error states, form loading, form data, everything that there is to do with forms can be done much easier by using this action instead of using an on submit handler because a lot of that boilerplate like loading, error messages, and so on is automatically taken care of for you by these two hooks of use form status and use form state. And now another additional hook that's being added is use optimistic. Again, I entirely cover that hook inside of this course. And this hook just allows you to do optimistic updates. So for example, if you click on the like button on like a tweet or a post, what will happen is it'll automatically show you that that has been liked while the server is processing. And then once the actual result comes back, it'll either change it to liked or unliked based on if there is an error or not. So an optimistic update just shows you the most optimistic thing like saying, okay, if you click on this like button, you want to like it. So it'll show as liked immediately, even if it hasn't been submitted to the server yet. So this is just a really simple hook that makes doing that much easier. And it's honestly really cool and magical how this actually works. And again, I have a full video on that in the course. And this hooks course that I have is also completely free, by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. So if you are interested in it, it's completely free. All you have to do is sign up for the course, nothing else. Now, the next thing is talking about the actual client versus server directives. So you know that you can put use client or use server at the top of a file inside of Next.js to determine if that code is running on the server or if that code is being pushed down and ran on the client. 
So this is just a really easy way for you to distinguish between these two things. And right now it's really only usable inside of Next.js, but with this newest version of React 19 that's coming out, this is going to be a stable release instead of something that is in more of an experimental status, which means other frameworks can be built around these use client and use server features. And we will hopefully see more frameworks than just Next.js or Remix actually have these use client and use server features. And we can really start to play around with the power of this in more than just Next.js, which I think is really cool and important because more and more frameworks add to more innovation, which pushes all the frameworks further. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is this document metadata section. And essentially what this allows you to do is to put a title tag, a meta tag, or a link tag that deals with metadata anywhere inside of your React components. And it's automatically going to make sure it moves it to the right location inside of like the head or wherever else it needs to go. So if you want to have like a different title on multiple different pages, you can just drop this title component anywhere in your component and it's just going to work out of the box, which is really nice. And they mostly did this so that you can have certain things work fine when you're doing server rendering or React server components. They did this because certain things like React Helmet and other libraries like that won't work super well with this new way of doing things in React. So they just built in their own way of doing that, which is just a nice quality of life feature. The next thing I want to talk about has to do with Suspense. So you may not be familiar with Suspense. It's a new React 18 feature that allows you to essentially stream in things so you can stream your data in to be rendered. It's really popular in something like Next.js. And essentially what they're doing here is empowering Suspense by making sure that it waits for certain things like your style tags, links, and scripts to load. So if you have certain style tags that are only loaded on certain pages or certain components, or you have script tags that are running on only certain pages, this is going to make sure that all your styles and all your script tags are actually downloaded and ran before the page actually shows. That way you don't have an instance where your page renders, but none of your CSS has been downloaded yet. This is just essentially making sure all of that will work well together. And it even gives you a simple API that you can use to do this with more than just style link and script tags if you really want to, but that's a rather advanced feature. Now, those are the main features mentioned in this article, but there's actually quite a few additional things that are coming along. One thing is that web components are going to work much better in React 19. They mention it very briefly inside this article. It's like one sentence that they mention it, but they do mention that web components are now going to be working much better with React 19. So if you want to use web components in React, it should be much easier to implement them inside of a React project, because in the past, that was something that was really difficult, which is why you would almost always see when you're working at libraries, there would be a web component library and then like a React specific version, because it was so hard to make web components work in React, but now it should be much easier to get them to play well together. Now these last couple of features are really small, so I'll go through them quite quickly. The first is that forward ref is something you are never going to need to use ever again. And that's because the ref prop that you normally get by using forward ref is automatically going to be passed to every component inside of React. So you can just use refs by just passing it along as a second prop and you don't need this crappy forward ref function wrapping stuff anymore after this. Next is that you actually won't really need to use react.lazy anymore. And that's because a brand new hook called use, just simply use, is being added to React. And this use hook allows you to do a lot of really cool stuff. It allows you to essentially asynchronously load things, whether that's going to be asynchronously loading JavaScript files, whether it's going to be asynchronously running different promises, or maybe you even want to run your context through here. All of those things are possible with the use hook. It's honestly a rather complex hook that breaks all of the rules of normal hooks. So if you wanna learn more about that hook, I highly recommend checking out that free course. I go in depth into everything you can do with this hook because honestly, it's one of the coolest hooks that was added to React, but it can be incredibly complicated because like I said, it breaks all of the rules of every other hook out there. So if you're interested in checking out this use hook, I highly recommend checking out that free course. And that's all the big new changes coming to React 19. If you want to make sure you stay up to date with all the new hooks that are coming out in React, again, I highly recommend you check out that free course because as soon as new hooks are added or changed, I constantly update that course. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.